my name is Ty Alavizos. I'm a solution architect here at Satori. Um, after you've uh, taken Eric's advice about MFA and have access to your credentials, and after you've taken James's advice about securing your network uh, or your web apps with Kirk um, or uh, authorizing your network with Waleed, um, our customers are still faced with an overall problem of securing access to structured and semi-structured data databases. So we are in the business of protecting and allowing and managing access to data silos like SQL Server and RDS, Snowflake, BigQuery, Mongo, and so forth. We're actually gonna have just a few slides today and then I jump into a live product demonstration. Um, so around ABAC, ABAC is attribute-based access controls. And uh, it's sort of like the utopia or uh, golden path of using the information you already have in your organization and marrying that up to security paradigms. Um, in today's world, our customers either have granted too much access to their data warehouse with tools like Tableau and Looker and Power BI <clears throat> or the next several dozen clients or they've locked everybody out and the process to, to get access goes through a lengthy compliance and security review uh, process. Um, we're in the business of solving that problem. So we reduce project delays, overhead, productivity. We take care of risk and regulatory. Um, our customers are using Satori to solve for GDPR or CCPA. Uh, or any kind of localization, uh, the software itself can be deployed in any cloud. We're cloud agnostic, we're region agnostic. Um, and as a result of that, uh, you know, um, customers get a unified solution, right? So when you're using Satori, we are intercepting and brokering the communication between a client tool, again, like Tableau or Looker or Python code or whatever it might be, and your data warehouse. It could be an Azure SQL Server. It could be Snowflake. Most importantly, um, almost all of the large orgs or medium or even really any org that we talk to, they haven't standardized. They don't just have Amazon RDS. They don't just have Microsoft SQL Server or Azure Synapse and so forth. They have <clears throat> a heterogeneous environment. They have disparate data silos. And that's exactly uh, the, the challenge that Satori solves. Um, so let's actually jump in and give a quick overview of the software itself. I'm going to pull up uh, the product uh, proper. You're seeing the product from the point of view of an administrator or a data steward or a CISO or somebody that's in charge of security. The left-hand navigation reads like a workflow. The whole top half here, it's a day in the life. It's observability. I'm using the software to see who has access to what or what queries have been run. Uh, here's, for example, the access manager showing who's been granted access to which data sets with which policies, um, masking and redaction of PII is part of that. So if you want to start protecting uh, you know, health information in real time, showing uh, you know, an ID that's been hashed or tokenized or redacted, that's exactly what Satori does. When you run all of your consumption through the platform. The audit is very exhaustive and thorough. Here's the audit log showing some queries that have happened in the last hour against Synapse or Snowflake or you know whatever other data stores you've uh, configured in the system. And again, our customers really don't have one type of data silo. And therefore, they have an incredibly challenging problem of creating a unified security model that's going to support AWS Athena and Azure SQL Server or Snowflake and RDS and combining that into one platform is uh, exactly why they use Satori. We scan and understand uh, information that passes through our platform specific to taxonomy. <clears throat> so we know what uh, a date of birth is. So if I drill in there or an email address and you can see at a glance here, uh, a steward or a governance officer at the end of the year, they might be asked a question like, where are all of my email addresses across the corpus of my organization? And it turns out there's 41 different columns spread across Redshift and Postgres and SQL Server and so forth. And this idea of being able to understand what sensitive information is and then do something with it is the whole purpose of, of the platform. 
Uh, we organize things into what we call a data set. So again, here's a data set whose name is secured data sources. And at a glance, you can see it's securing all of this disparate cloud product. These are unrelated installations that exist at my fictitious, you know, Fortune 100 company. And from a single, uh, you know, construct here on the screen, I can create access rules. Which of my single sign-on users and groups should have access to all of that data and with which policies? Of course, multiple uh, policies can uh, apply here. So let's actually focus in now on attribute-based access controls, ABAC. The premise of ABAC is that you have user information. You know, in some of the earlier sessions, we've hinted at you know, identity. Um, and as part of a single sign-on experience, I'm specifically referring to you know, Azure Active Directory or Okta or One Login or a product like Junk Cloud. Um, the best place to put user attribution is in the single sign-on layer. So this demonstration you're about to see actually uses Azure. It could have been Okta or any of the other, you know, single sign-on entities out there. And here are two fictitious user accounts, Satori Demo 1 and Satori Demo 2. And interestingly, they've got some attribution. They're part of departments. This could be, a, you know, a region code or a state or geographic or role-based information. The bottom line, though, is it's an attribute. And so you can see one of the users is part of department PR 703 and the other user is part of department fraud management. What we'd like to do is leverage that information in Satori. So I'm going to jump to the consumption experience. And then what we'll do is tie it all together back in the Satori platform. Um, it's an interesting thing, but I actually have a remote desktop over to my Power BI experience. I'm an analyst now. Uh, on the screen here in the upper right, it says I'm logged in as Satori Demo 1. And if I go look, you can see there's redaction that's occurring here. We've hashed the address field and we've hashed the email address, but kept its uh, you know, construction with the at sign. Uh, but if we go look at the next page here, here is that attribute-based access control being filtered in real time. So uh, Satori Demo 1 is only in charge of PR 703. There is that same department code. It's been filtered by Satori. Uh, just for fun, I'll click uh, refresh and run that query so that it <clears throat> shows up in our audit log. Uh, meanwhile, I have a different tool to prove that Satori is tool agnostic. This could be Tableau, Looker, uh, Power BI, as you just saw. In this case, here's Azure Data, Data Studio. It could be any kind of client data software that connects to information. I'll just run this query a second time. And you can see this second user, I'm logged in as that second demo user. I've hovered over the connection. It says Story Demo User 2. And they're assigned to the prod management department. That filtering has occurred automatically. Let's take a look back in Satori and review those queries that just came in, I'll set this to the last five minutes and we'll see the information that came through the platform. You can see at a glance, here they are, here are those uh, queries that came through and there's a bunch of information we're gonna show. We also handily tell you the action that Satori took uh, that could have been blocked or that kind of thing. But if we look in the, the filtering here, we know who the user was, where they came from, and what policies we chose to apply. We did both masking and filtering in this case. Um, and that's the essence of like the audit part of this. Where this all starts to tie together is that Satori supports single sign-on. It's, uh, it's extremely easy to set this up. I, you can set up single sign-on with Azure or Okta and so forth in about four minutes. Uh, it's really trivial right here under the sign-on tab. We also have this uh, really excellent integration called SKIM. Now, SKIM is an open standard. All of the major SAML uh, SSO providers have embraced it. And it's what allows that provisioning to occur. Back over here in Azure, SKIM is what will send this attribute information from what's known as the identity provider, that's Azure in this case, uh, to the consumer, which is Satori. And so that uh, integration with Skim is what allows us to get that information in our user list. Here's that same user from within Satori. And you can see, sure enough, 
they're, uh, they've got this special code assigned to their department. And the only last thing you need to do is create a security rule. Um, and by the way, we have full support for masking here. Let's make a quick change to our masking on the fly uh, and change, you know, Acme to uh, Angel Beat, um, and, you know, that kind of thing. Here, I'll make a few different changes here so you can see that these things happen in real time. Um, and then I'll do this one too. Oops, go away dictionary. And the security rule, just to show you where that gets set up, is under a Satori security policy. So if we go look at the Synapse policy, it does two primary things. It does the masking rules. You just saw all of that PII and PHI redacted, but it also does that data filtering. We've been looking at a test table. That table name is called Skim Data Example. It's in a database called Demo and a schema called DBO. And we're filtering on a column called Department. So we're marrying up the attributes, and that's what the A comes from, from ABAC, which exist in our single sign-on system. We're marrying that up to data that actually exists in our data warehouse. Notice this expression. It says, if the user has an attribute in single sign-on called department, then let's just get that attribute. And by the way, the next line says, if it's me, it's a backdoor. Let's let them look at all the values from this table called skim data example. And so as the sort of super user, I can see all of the data. But most of my audience, my analysts and people using all of the various client tools will be filtered down to their own department. That one line of uh, you know, configuration there is what ties it all together, right? So just to prove that out, we go back to our remote desktop and uh, you know, refresh these connections. Um, by the way, I, just to show you that the, the tie user, that's myself, you can see they have access to all of the, the, the department codes. There's a much longer list of them, but those two different users that we've been using <clears throat> are only seeing one of those based upon the attribute that exists as part of their user profile. Pretty powerful. Um, and so, yeah, that is the quickest sort of demonstration of uh, you know, how uh, the platform works and operates. And at this point, we just want to reiterate that everything you just saw was a live demonstration. If you are interested in uh, you know, taking a closer look at how this all works, we have a fully functional uh, test drive. It's uh, very easy to get up and running. We can prove out everything you just saw on the screen in a pretty uh, rapid amount of time, typically measured in minutes and hours. At that point, I'll go ahead and pause to see if there's any quick questions or thoughts or comments.